Manufacturing company, which made grain cradles, hay rakes, and hay forks, was owned and operated by Henry Walk. The innovative company used assembly lines and state of the art manufacturing techniques to make farm implements, which were shipped all over the world. While much research has been done and volumes have been written on the development of the reaper and other mechanical harvesting machines, the importance of the simple grain cradle, especially during the first half of the 19th century, appears to have been overlooked. The invention of the grain cradle was a major advance in the harvesting of grain. The grain cradle is simply a scythe with an arrangement of fingers attached to the handle, such that the cut grain falls upon the fingers and can be cleanly laid down in a row for collection. It was said that with the grain cradle, an experienced man could cut eight acres of wheat in one day. The cradle was commonly used throughout the 1800s and into the beginning of the 20th century in part because many of the smaller farms were not designed for mechanical reaping and in part because there were still a great number of smaller farms where the mechanical reaper was not economical. However, by the end of the 19th century, the cradle had been generally replaced by the mechanical reaper, a horse-drawn or tractor-drawn machine patented by Cyrus McCormick in 1834. Henry Walk manufactured grain cradles, grain rakes, and shaking forks in his shop in Antrim Township, Pennsylvania during the 19th century. Mr. Walk was born in Antrim Township in 1834, more than 25 years prior to the Civil War. While working on a local farm, Henry fashioned a shaking fork for the use of a friend. The workmanship was of such quality that others soon began requesting that he make forks for them. Soon, Mr. Walk established a little shop on the farm. A few years later, he moved the shop to his own property, opposite the Cane Break Schoolhouse, and engaged in business as a manufacturer of forks, rakes, and grain cradles. At the height of his success, he produced about 1,500 cradles, 2,000 forks, and 2,000 rakes a year. With the help of his son, Lester, he continued in business until 1924, retiring at the age of 90. In 1929, Ira Lesher of Marion, Pennsylvania, put all of Mr. Walk's tools and equipment and incorporated them into his furniture making shop. Lesher produced cradles, rakes, and forks until 1939. Mr. Lesher's son, J. Ira Lesher, donated all the tools, patterns, and equipment to the Tay Menasakta Environmental Center in Greencastle, Pennsylvania, where they are now on display. The machinery and tools donated by Mr. Lesher have been set up on the main floor of the barn at Tame Anasakta. Let's take a look at the functions of these machines and the process of making grain cradles, hay rakes, and hay forks. The grain cradle handle, or sned, was made from 4.5 inch planks of green white ash. The fingers of the cradles were made from 2.5 inch planks and were of different lengths depending on their placement on the cradle. A jig was used to drill the holes in the handle for the fingers. These were shaped and sanded on the belt sander and bundled in groups of 24 to dry. The handle of the cradle was cured in two directions. It was round and smooth. The function of the duplicating lathe was to turn these square pieces of wood into round ones. The lathe did its work by having a saw touch a little bit into the wood which had been cut and sawed in shape, but which had the edges still there. There was a pattern that was about the same width as the saw teeth, but larger than the piece of wood it was to form. This pattern revolved at exactly the same speed as the piece of wood being shaped. The whole top of the lathe rocked back and forth touching the saw blade as it went. The belt sander was used to smooth the handle or sned. Power for it came from the shaft below through an opening in the floor. Also on that floor was the sanding machine. For efficiency, it was not far from the lathe. The sanding machine was also powered below and had two pulleys and a sanding belt. The snathe, handle of the cradle, was held against the sanding belt which ran against two pulleys. During the part of the season that the handles were being made, the belt was recoated with sand each evening. Henry had several casting patterns to produce the metal parts of the cradle. These would be sent to the forge to be sand casted. Castings were placed in sand to create patterns and then hot metal poured into them to make pieces for the cradle. The assembly table was made by Ira Lesher and used for the assembly of grain cradles. It is not known if Henry Walk used such an assembly table or if Ira Lesher created this to speed the assembly of the cradles. 
Mr. Lesher was filmed several years ago demonstrating the assembly of a grain cradle to students visiting Te Amenasacta. This is an excerpt. Notice this little bracket right there between the first ring and the snit. I want you to see this little bracket here. That little bracket there hooks to a hole in the side. Right there and right there. Well, when Mr. Walk made them, he made all those little things on the third line. Well, that takes too much. You can put a guy with him board a hole. This item here, this is all brass. This item here, this ring here is this little ring right there. And this part right here is this handle. Uh, you turn you turn these on the turning leg, you bore a hole in, and you turn that right into the hole, and that went right over the handle. The last piece put on the cradle was the blade. After all pieces were assembled, one coat of varnish would be applied. Three completed cradles were stacked together and wrapped in brown paper tape for shipping. On the first floor, the hay rakes were assembled. There was the boring machine near the stairs to the second floor. It was also powered by the central shaft. The table on this machine was arranged to slide to the rake head. This provided the correct angle between the ground and the rake as it was used in the fields. The table that slid back and forth bored the holes to put in the teeth. There are also two holes to hold a cured round support to keep the angle between the rake head and rake handle correct. No handwork was done in this section of the shop. Handwork was done in the old section by machinery that did not require power. The hay fork started with green hickory logs that were split to see which way the grain ran. Boards were sawed from the split side of the log. A pattern was used to draw the shape of the hay fork onto the board. The lathe was used to turn the handle into the round. The handle jig was used to bend the handle of the hay fork. The forks were sawed with the bandsaw and shaped. The fork was then immersed in a vat of boiling water to soften it so it could be bent, which was accomplished by placing it into the jig. It would take three to four weeks for this to dry. The curved part of the fork was coated with resin to reduce wear during use. Charles White, past director of Teamenisacta, is shown here explaining the construction of the hay fork. The Henry Walk manufacturing business also manufactured hay forks. And here are the steps that they took to manufacture a hay fork. They started out by cutting down a green hickory tree. They would quarter the log to get what's called a quarter cut and saw it into one inch thick boards. When they had the boards, this is the pattern that they would use, hooked over the board, and they could trace out the pattern for a three-prong hay fork. They would saw, after cutting out the pattern, they would saw the fingers for the hay fork. They would put this into a vat of boiling water and boil it for 24 hours. They had cast iron forms that they used to make the shape of the head of the hay fork. They would take the boiled pattern and put it in there and bend it, and it would automatically space how far apart the fingers should be and then they would use a wooden form that they would use to get oops, the bend in the handle. To obtain wood, Henry would drive the countryside with horse and buggy and look for likely trees. When he saw one that he thought was suitable, he went to the farmer and negotiated to buy the tree. Then, the shop crew would go to cut the tree down and cut it into proper lengths. A Mr. Ziegler furnished the wagon and horses. The logs were rolled up on the wagon, which was usually pulled by four horses. Then the logs went to Sam Fenwick Sawmill, which was about a quarter or half mile from the shop. Here the logs were sawed into planks of proper thicknesses. Henry Walk's grain cradle, hay fork, and hay rake were important tools in agriculture in the late 19th and early 20th century. It is through the generosity and efforts of several dedicated people that
that the process of manufacturing these have been preserved. <laughs>